So guys, today we're going to talk about the sneakers, one of the most essential items that we wear every day. These shoes acquired the nickname Plimsoll in the 1870s, which resembled the Plimsoll line on a ship's oar. Plimsoll were widely worn by vacationers and also began to be worn by sportsmen on the tennis and croquet courts from their comfort. Around 1892, the US rubber company came up with a more comfortable rubber sneakers with the canvas tops called Kels. By 1917, these sneakers began to be mass produced. British company J. Foster & Sons designed and produced the first shoes designed for running in 1895. The shoes were spiked to allow for greater traction and speed. The company sold its high quality and made running shoes to athletes around the world. In 1917, Marcus Converse produced the first shoe made for just basketball called Converse All Stars. In 1923, an Indiana Hoops star named Chuck Taylor endorsed the shoes and they became known as Chuck Taylor's All Stars. During the interwar period, athletic shoes began to be marketed for different sports and differentiated designs were made available for men and women. Were used by competing athletes at the Olympics, helping to popularize athletic shoes among the general public. In 1936, a French band Spring Court marketed the first canvas tennis shoe, featuring the signature 8 ventilation channels on a vulcanized natural rubber sole. Adolf Adit Lasser began producing his own sports shoes in his mother wash kitchen in Bavaria after his return from the World War I and went on to establish one of the leading athletic shoe manufacturers, Adidas. He also mar marketed his shoes to athletes at the 1936 Summer Olympics, which helped cement his good reputation. Business boomed and the Dazzlers were selling 2,000 pairs of shoes each year before World War II. During the first half of the 20th century, sports shoes were worn mostly to play sports, but in the 1950s, kids began wearing them as a fashion statement. Even more teens followed the fad after seeing James Dean in sneakers in the popular movie Rebel Without a Cause. During the 1950s, sneaker sales rose so high they began to adversely affect the sales of the conventional leather shoes, leading to a fierce advertising war for the market share in the late 50s. In the 1970s, jogging for exercise became increasingly popular, and trainers designed specifically for comfort while jogging sold well. Sales of sneakers really took off in 1984, when Michael Jordan signed a contract to wear a Nike shoe called Air Jordans, the most famous sneaker ever made. Even after Jordan retired from the NBA, his shoes continued to be bestsellers. As companies like Nike, Reebok, and Adidas competed, they changed the way sneakers looked adding white colors and doing away with laces. Sneakers have been an important part of hip hop, primarily Pumas, Nike and Adidas and rock and roll Converse, culture since the 1970s. Hip hop artists signed million dollar deals with major brands such as Nike, Adidas or Puma to promote their shoes. Size 13s get support, protection, and a custom fit. So, Michael, my man, if you want to fly first class, pump up and air out. Switch to the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. Jordan. 